Um, and up next is Tim. Um, yeah, we running a bit behind. We build buffer time in, but I think we might cut one or two of the recorded talks um, if we uh, come out on time uh, so we can be sure to get to Vincent's tutorial. Although, uh, yeah, actually, Vincent, did you, does your tutorial need a full hour? <laughs> um no I, I could make it shorter okay maybe we'll go over a little bit into that since you took some of your own time away <laughs> awesome over to you tim all right you can uh see my screen and hear me and everything yep uh, looks cool. great i'm going to try to give warning at five minutes so okay i'll start my time right here too all right, all right i'm going to be talking about uh Cloud optimized GeoTIFF rendering with WebGL, and this is going to be featuring the Open Layers library. So this is from the perspective of somebody who is not a data provider or not um, looking to use existing tools, but someone who's developing web applications. Open Layers is a library that lets you put maps on web pages. Uh, in last fall, in the 6.7 release, Open Layers introduced the GeoTIFF source. So this is an example of how you could pull from an existing cog that's hosted online. This might be a, a true color image, three band image, um, and we can display it as a source in, in open layers. If instead you wanted to pull from uh, multiple different single band cogs, as Jed was talking about, uh, this might be uh, near infrared, red, and green as three different GeoTIFFs, and we could display them together as a single source in open layers. Uh, in addition, if you have external overviews, if your overviews aren't built into the cog, but instead are in a separate file, the GeoTIFF source lets you specify where those overviews live as a separate URL. We also try to read the GeoTIFF headers and extract information like the no data values and read statistics to get valid data ranges. But if you want to customize or override those, you can do so on these options. So this is what it looks like uh, rendered. This is a single Sentinel um, cog in the Minneapolis area. And I can zoom in and get down to the native resolution, zoom back out and view those overviews. Um, I'll switch to this separate uh, source here that's represented as three different single band geotiffs. And I can do the same thing. As I'm hovering around here in the top left, you can see these raw pixel values. So I can access just on pointer move, I can access the, the GeoTIFF pixel values um, uh, under my cursor. I'll switch to a different location. This is showing Cape Town also in that false color composite. Um, or I can switch to it different composite and look at it in uh, true color. This is a single true color image. The true color image is just byte data. So these values range from zero to 256. And then in the false color composite, that was uh, uint 16 data. So you see that we're actually interacting with the actual uh, GeoTIFF values there. Two functions that we made use of in the previous example. The first one was that uh, get data function that allowed me to display the, the pixel values up in the upper left. And then the second new function on a source, if the source provides information like the projection, the extent, the overviews and their resolutions, sources now have a get view method, which returns a promise for view related properties. And then you can use that as your maps view. So you don't have to uh, go out and read the metadata yourself or figure out how to configure the view. You can just say, let the source configure the view. Uh, in those previous examples, I was using um, RGB three band data or three separate bands with um, three separate rasters with a single band each. If you had, for example, a four or a higher number of bands, um, GeoTIFF, you could choose which bands you want to display in which channels. So here's an example of doing band one in the red channel, band two in the green channel and band three uh, in the blue channel, and then always using an alpha of one. If instead I had four band data where the fourth uh, channel was near infrared, I might decide I want to display near infrared uh, in the red channel, and then the red 
um, visible red data in the green channel, and finally the visible green in the blue channel. A little bit of what it looks like under the hood. So we use the awesome geotiff.js library, which I think you'll hear about later on, to parse geotiffs in a web worker. So this is off of the main thread, parsing the geotiff in a web worker. The source then la uh, loads tiles from that geotiff, converts them into typed arrays, band interleaved by pixel, and then we bind that to textures. We also compile shaders for you based on the style expression, which I'll talk about a little bit more, and then render render pipeline on the GPU, stitch that back together and display it in the browser. We looked at these band accessors. You can say, I want my uh, pixels to be displayed directly from the van bands. You can also perform transformations on that data. So here I'm doing a difference between near infrared and red, the sum of those two, bands, and then NDVI would be the ratio between the difference and the sum. Uh, and finally, you can say you want to do a linear interpolation of NDVI, displaying values that are negative one as a gray color and positive one as a green, dark green color. I think I'm seeing notification that I'm going over time here, but here's an example of that uh, dynamically generated NDVI values, and then I'm showing the values in the top there. I wanted to just quickly mention that you don't also only just have to do these static renderings. You can configure variables and say, I want the user to control which bands go uh, in which channels, for example. And then as the user changes some elements in the UI, uh, you can change which bands are displayed. So I might generate a false color composite here and do some contrast stretching or let the user do contrast stretching. Finally, uh, Jed mentioned that uh, geotiffs are not just for imagery data, you might have elevation data, and this is the same type of example, letting the user select where sea level is. There's elevation data in the geotiff here, and as I'm dragging back and forth the slider, I'm updating a style variable for where this um, sea level is, rendering everything below sea level blue and above sea level as transparent. So, uh, that's it. And if you want to give it a try, um, you can check out the Open Layers website and get more information there. And um, that's all I've got. Awesome. Thanks, Tim. Um.